This week on Storyboard, we are in conversation with DDB Worldwide's Global President and Chief Operating Officer, Alex Lubar, exclusively as he joins us from New York on their recent winning spree at award shows, talent strategy, new business pipeline and more. We have J. Michael Prince, President and CEO of US Polo Assassin, USPA and Shailesh Chaturvedi, who is a Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Arvind Fashions Limited, speaking about growth plans for US Polo in India. And Bandhan Bank recently announced the launch of Sonic Identity Call of Bandhan. To tell us more, we are joined in by Apurva Sirkar, Head Marketing Bandhan Bank and Praveen Sutar, Creative Head Leo Burnett Orchard. Hello and welcome to Storyboard, I'm Shubani Gharat. It has been a year since DDB Worldwide named Alex Lubar as their Global President and Chief Operating Officer and what a year it has been for the agency. First and most recent, DDB Worldwide was named the Network of the Year at Cannes Lion Festival of Creativity 2023. This win came on the heels of both winning Network of the Year and Agency of the Year at the DNAD Awards while DDB Latina was recognized as Top Agency Network at La Crema and at FEUS, DDB was named the top agency network for second consecutive year. There might be some lucky charm working, but he doesn't want to take credit for all of it, says Alex jokingly. We caught up with him and spoke to him about many things, including new business pipeline, talent strategy and capabilities that they are strengthening across different markets. Listen in. Alex, welcome to CNBC TV again and welcome to my show, Storyboard. Thank you very much, Shivani. I'm glad to be here. Alex, it's been a year since uh, you have joined DDB Worldwide. Tell us more, how have the past 12 months been for you? Look, it's been a fabulous uh, first few months. We've been extremely busy all over the world. Um, you know, we've got an, an enormous number of clients pursuing an enormous number of activities in each of our idiosyncratic regions and markets. Uh, you know, from my perspective, the, the offering that DDB really brings to the world is putting creativity at the center of the business offering. As we like to say, creativity is the most powerful force in business. And, uh, and so we like to drive that home within our markets and, and with our clients. So personally, the focus has been ensuring that we are delivering that level of product across all our markets in as consistent a fashion as possible. And as you can imagine, in a service business, that's really driven by having the best possible talent that you can uh, acquire. If you look at the past 12 months, uh, I must say that DDB Worldwide has been on a winning streak. The most recent ones are the 85 Lions and winning the Creative Network of the Year. Uh, is it a lucky charm that you've got in along with you or what is it? And tell us That's the right. winning streak. Well, I would have to be um, honest and admit that there must be a, a certain amount of luck to win that so quickly, right? You know, the uh, the um, Creative Network of the Year. You uh, have to take the credit for it, Alex. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, I can't I can't take the credit for it. It um, look winning at Cannes, the Creativity Network of the Year, is a massive achievement, and it's an achievement that you cannot um, complete as one single market or even a few markets, it requires an entire global network to be firing on all cylinders. And so at the end of the day, I think what makes us most proud is in order to deliver that result, that means that everybody has to have put some of the best product out there into the marketplace. Uh, I will also add that winning in creativity is only part of the equation. The other part is winning in efficacy. As we like to say, we want to be creative and effective at the, team, at the same time because great creative work means nothing with ultimately not having efficacy and, and driving results and, and sales uh, for our clients. And what were the steps taken by you to make it happen, to you know have or strike that balance between being creative and being efficient? But we've also constructed a group called Bullseye which is our internal global creative council that works together to highlight the best work that is coming out of individual markets uh, and then also to uh, to continue to evolve that work and develop that work so that it can be 
uh, the best possible version of itself. Alex, what does uh, the new business uh, pipeline look like and how has the business fared so far? Uh, you know, it's almost uh, uh, nine months uh, down the line. How has the business been in the year 2023? It, it has been robust, to say the least. Maybe the, the bags under my eyes would suggest that. <laughs> uh, we're very busy all over the world. And, and you know, that is obviously a, a good sign. Uh, you know, despite some, some macroeconomic um, headwinds, depending on the market, we still have a huge amount of activity uh, on the part of our clients. And, and that is uh, exciting. It can be challenging, but it is always dynamic. And, you know, the big piece that our clients are all trying to wrap their head around is technology and how technology is influencing the marketing decisions that they're making. So we're very happy to be uh, part of those discussions and, and working with them. But, you know, having said that, Alex, and you mentioned bags under your eyes, that could also mean sleepless nights. And most of, you know, the holding companies that we have seen over the past uh, few weeks, uh, they have uh, shown negative growth in the first half of the year. Uh, you know, in fact, Mark Reed went ahead and said that, you know, uh, lower spending by these big tech companies has also impacted the, their holding company. Uh, Alex, I want to understand your take on uh, this and, you know, its impact on your business at DDB Worldwide. No, I, I think that's a very fair question. And I would say the short answer for that is having a diverse portfolio of clients is what protects you against headwinds of certain sectors. So whilst there might be some um, pull, pulling back in the tech sector, as long as you have a good diverse spread within your portfolio, you have some level of protection. And, and we've got a very diverse portfolio. Great. How have the India business and the India market fared for DDB Worldwide, Alex? Well, India is a shining light Shivani for us. And, and I and I think you know, and I think your audience will know that um, you know, the India Indian economy uh you know is is doing so well. Uh, you know, I, I think anticipated growth for this year is somewhere near 7.2% uh, you know, GDP, which is really uh global leading in terms of growth. So you in some cases you have a little bit of a tale of two cities, or you have some markets that are pulling back, but in the case of India, you really have uh, a lot of growth, right? So we're seeing that at a macroeconomic level, and we're seeing that down at, at the local level with, with our business itself. I mean, I think when you look at India's ad revenue, the expected growth for uh, for 2023 is 12% up to you know 17 plus billion dollars. So, so we're feeling very positive uh, about the Indian market. Um, you know, and you just look at the news recently and, and landing on the moon and, you know, in, in the south side, south pole of the moon. I mean, it's very exciting. I think there's a level of energy and, uh, you know, dynamism and excitement in the, uh, in the Indian market at the moment. So we're very, we're, we're excited about it. Absolutely. And Omnicom also recently set up like a large center in, uh, in the country in Hyderabad. Uh, but having said that, you know, and you uh, seem really optimistic about, uh, you know, the India growth story. But having said that, Alex, what is your wish list for uh, uh, the managers managing the India business over here? Oh, I think in part, it's uh, one, continue to do what they're doing, focus on growth, knowing that creativity is at the center of our offering, uh, continue to output best-in-class product that not only inspires the Indian market, but also can travel globally. And I think when the rest of the world looks at great product that comes out of any market, including the Indian market, and sees that it can be best-in-class, I think that's inspiring to all. And it benefits not only the globe, but it benefits the Indian market itself on growth and talent that is driving great creative product also apart from that what are the capabilities that you guys are strengthening across uh, your different markets Alex well the, it's interesting that you say that there is obviously a big focus on the technology uh, the breadth of technology capabilities that we have and generative AI is a very very hot topic and you know we have you know, via Omnicom, we have several exclusive partnerships with Adobe, Microsoft, Google, that are allowing us to enter the generative AI market in different interesting ways so that we can tailor those offerings uh, to our clients, depending on what they need, because it's very 
it's very different depending on sector. But that is certainly um, a hot area. The, the other thing specifically for the Indian market is there is an opportunity to continue to push work globally into the market because of the level of talent that exists in the Indian market today. We can continue to push opportunities and, and work from markets from all over the world into the Indian market because, uh, because the talent is, a, is at such a high level talent strategy around you know AI uh, in general and how are you applying it across your different markets? Having a strong level of AI acumen both across our, our strategists, our creatives and our tech experts so that there's a level of knowledge around the capabilities that we can then go out and, and we can bring ideas to our clients and, and we can discuss new technologies in a, in a comprehensive and, and thoughtful manner. Um, you know, we've got a number of individuals uh, that have been focusing on the AI space over the last several years. Uh, we have a gentleman by the name of George Strakoff, who is our CSO in, in Europe, who has very much spent, uh, you know, the last 24 months uh, sort of immersed in the AI space. And, and in fact, he got um, international headlines for something called the Uncreative Agency, which was the uh, the world's first automated creative agency built off of AI. And it was uh, serious on one level, but it was playful on another level in, in the sense that it was an experiment to show how AI could start to participate in, in our creative world. So, um, uh, so we have the talent, we have the talent that has the knowledge and then we have the talent that is out there uh, playing with the technologies and, and testing the technologies so that we can bring interesting uh, solutions to our clients. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today and sharing insights with us, Alex. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Well, thank you for having me, Shivani. It is time for a short break on the other side. Welcome back. With an approach encompassing omni-channel strategies, the US polo assassin aims to solidify its standing as a prominent casual wear brand in India. The brand recently also introduced an exclusive brand-specific website, uspoloassassin.in, to enhance the digital experience for customers and provide streamlined access to its product range. Notably, US polo became the first brand within Arvind Fashion's limited portfolio to launch a dedicated brand website. Speaking about their plans, J. Michael Prince, the president and CEO of USPA Global Licensing, said the brand has achieved a commendable growth in the India market. We caught up with him along with Shailesh Chaturvedi, who is a managing director and chief executive officer, Arvind Fashions Limited, and spoke to them about their strategy going forward, their campaign, Legends Forever, Play Together and much more. Listen in. The first brand under Arvind Fashions to have its own standalone brand website, uh, Shailesh. Uh, what are the big plans and your aspirations with this? See, <clears throat> US Polo is the largest uh, brand in our portfolio and has the largest consumer base also. And it cuts across age groups. So you'll find youngsters, uh, cafe, going a youngster wearing t-shirt and airport their uncle or dad also would be wearing uh, the same brand so it's the largest brand and we leave no stone unturned to sort of take it forward and website was a very clear thing because it's a very large online presence uh, in terms of apparel probably the largest online sale of any apparel brand would be in us polo and we've been testing the website for last six months and now it's ready to reach consumers so we're really excited about this uh, michael your take on the india market uh, why is it so promising for the brand it is just i get so excited about when i think about this marketplace so the brand over the last five years has grown over a billion dollars we're at over 2.3 billion worldwide and India represents about 15% of that growth and it's been our fastest growing market. And so I share in Shalash's passion about this new site because not only can we serve consumers through retail stores, through department stores, through our, our wholesale accounts, but now all over the marketplace they can engage with this website and see the full collection of the product yes. in totality. And we've never been able to offer that before. So it's truly a monumental moment 
uh, for the brand and for the marketplace and, and could be more excited to be here. Let me just add also here that it also sh gives us the opportunity to showcase new categories like women's wear, like, uh, you know, kids wear, like belts and uh, women handbags and footwear. So it's also a place where we can showcase new product categories. And, and reach a wider number of cities as compared to your existing presence? Yeah, I mean, online then becomes uh, uh, open to all zip codes in the country. So yes, you're right that it hopefully it'll increase our reach also tremendously. Yeah, Michael, if you can also share with us, what are some of the insights that you find very interesting about India market, very different as compared to, uh, you know, some of the global markets that uh, US Polo is present? What I, I love about the Indian market for the brand, and we have great consumers all over the world, but just the passion for the brand, and you see the brand everywhere, and, and Shalash mentioned this, young, old, Rich, poor, it doesn't matter. They love to engage with the brand, and I think it's the brand itself. It's a great product offering. It's the pops of color. It's the different offerings we give the consumer. And I've been so proud of walking the different marketplaces the last four or five days and seeing our brand, because it's like a, a brand of uh, pride. But it's, it's great to see all the uh, different consumers around the marketplace wearing the brand with such passion. Great, and along with this uh, launch, you're also launching a new campaign uh, with combination of uh, legends and icons, if I may say so. Uh, one is uh, with Leander Pays and Mahesh Bhupati uh, Shalesh and also Milan Soman and Arjun Rampal, you know, who have been uh, the icons in the modeling world and the others, uh, you know, in the tennis, tennis world. So if you can share with us the, the genesis of the campaign as well and what do you expect it to do for your consumer? See, we are firing on all cylinders when it comes to US Polo association brand uh, we have you know us polo brand is a very democratic accessible warm uh, brand it brings people together and whether it is the polo sport or in lifestyle in real life so we have a tagline which says play together uh, and we use the idea of twinning uh, where two people together are wearing same t-shirt so we had arjun rampal with his girlfriend or arjun rampal with his son or all three of them wearing the same garment and the twinning really caught on and our consumers loved it. Now we want to take this forward. Then he said, who is the next pair? So we said, why not bring Milin Soman because Arjun and Milin were contemporaries. But you know, the fact is they never worked together in a campaign. The first time they're doing a campaign together. And we said there's nothing better than getting these legends of fashion modeling. And since brand also has a lifestyle, but with sports, sports lifestyles. I said, we must get a sports angle and then we look for a similar pair of similar repute. And then we said, why not Mahesh Bhupati and Leander Pace and Lee Hash, you know, with three Grand Slam, uh, Lee's uh, Olympic bronze, there's no bigger pair we could think of, really legendary uh, pair and they have also agreed. So we're fortunate that these four legends agree to come under the US Polo umbrella and they're twinning. We are very happy to launch this campaign together. Also, we are launching a women's wear initiative today with Palak Tiwari, the new uh, upcoming actress, and we will launch uh, her association with US Polo Women's Wear. Yes, my next question to, uh, is to both of you, actually. You mentioned how India is one of your fastest growing markets. Uh, what is the growth projection going forward, you know, and, uh, you know, where do you see headroom for growth in this market where you are like fairly well established and present in various cities, over 425 stores, as you mentioned. Yeah. So yes. I would say let's hear from Michael the global growth plan and we will tag along with his uh, you know global growth story. Michael over to you. So I get to go first. All yes. right. Uh, globally, you know, we just hit 2.3 billion and we think the way the year's trending will be at 2.5 billion at the end of 2023, give or take. Uh, so we're seeing tremendous growth all over the world and Shalesh mentioned this earlier because you know, consumers really connect and engage with the brand from a sport inspiration and lifestyle perspective. And we see that growth also happening in India. India is one of our fastest growing, has been the fastest growing market the last few years. Uh, but I'll let you elaborate on, uh, on how you see India so, performing. So we've already reached, uh, we're close to the 2000 crore uh, uh, business in India. And we see uh, uh, opportunity to grow it very rapidly and we are guiding uh, that we will grow at around 12 to 15 percent and we see there are four or five big uh, you know drivers of that growth uh, first is that our like to like stores are growing we are premiumizing the brand uh, our efficiency in the stores productivity is going up second is we are expanding stores so we hope to open at least 50 stores per year if not more 
that we should give the growth. Third is adjacent category. So women's wear, uh, footwear has been a big success, uh, a very profitable, very fast growing business. Kid wear, we have a dominant position, leadership position. We just launched wallets and belts. A lot of new adjacent category, they're growing at 20% plus and have a good share of the brand and they'll keep continuing to grow the brand. And finally, the digitalization. So the website will bring in its own uh, reach and consumers and revenue and omni linkages with our stores and uh, online business with our partners. So we see there are a lot of growth drivers which are firing and we should be able to grow the brand uh, rapidly going forward as well. And also if you can share with us, how are you navigating this entire dynamic retail landscape in the country with US Polo? See, what happens is that whatever happens to the retail uh, landscape, US Polo remains the dominant leading brand. So if, if a mall wants to open, they want US Polo. If a department store wants to go to some place, they will need US Polo. So having a leadership position in India really helps because whatever happens and whichever channel uh, uh, grows, but they want US Polo. So irrespective of the channel, US Polo remains the dominant men casual wear brand leader. So to be, you know, when you are in a leadership position, you can maneuver the, you know, changes in the landscape much better than somebody else who is not a leader. Okay, congratulations on the launch and thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, sharing the insights with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. It is time for a short break on the other side. Welcome back. Bandhan Bank recently announced the launch of their sonic identity on the occasion of the bank's Foundation Day celebration. This sonic identity call of Bandhan has been composed by renowned music composer Amit Trivedi. This musical piece is more than just a tune, says the brand. To tell us more, we are joined in by Apurva Sirkar, Head Marketing, Bandhan Bank and Praveen Sutar, Creative Head, Leo Burnett, Orchard. Listen in. Apurva, Praveen, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Hey. So, Apurva, let's begin this conversation with you. Let's speak about uh, Bandhan Bank's sonic identity. Uh, tell us the reason for creating this sonic identity and also the timing of it. So, Shivani, uh, Bandhan has had, a, I would say, a very good run, and not just as a bank in the last eight years. Uh, but the journey started in 2001 when we started as an NGO. Yeah. And uh, it has been one of the most purpose-led brands that at least I have had an opportunity to work on. So, uh, as we became a bank, a universal bank, it was important for us to create awareness that Bandhan is a bank, a universal bank that you can reach out to for any banking solution. And that's where we started, you know, displaying our logos everywhere, advertising. So the visual medium is something that we leveraged the best that we could. Yeah. And uh, that's where around about six months back is a discussion that started with Leo Burnett and us saying, where is it that we can bring about, let's say, another sensation than just visual? which would remind people of Bandhan Bank and give us more opportunity to remind people that Bandhan Bank is right there mm. for all your needs. And among the various things that got discussed, one was how about have our own sonic branding. Mm. And that's where the discussion started. And uh, given that the usage or the use cases for sonic branding is immense and you can actually uh, recollect so many brands that have actually worked on sound mm. to remind people of their presence, right? Yeah. And that is something that where we, uh, uh, a destination that we wanted to be for ourselves as well. Hmm. And uh, that's how it started. Praveen, you had roped in uh, Amit Trivedi yeah. for this one. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about the whole creative process of uh, creating this identity. So the creating the identity was uh, very interesting, right? The journey itself was very interesting. Like we had like uh, many uh, conversations about how to, because we all have lived this brand, right? I mean, uh, since very long and we know uh, what this brand means now, right? I mean, where it came and where it's heading right now, right? So that's a that's a great, that was a reference uh, for us, right? And moving forward, we as we, uh, you know, uh, move further, uh, we were thinking and we were like, we had many conversations and that was the question mm -hmm. that we kept on asking, like, why Amit Trivedi? While we had other, you know, musicians also, right, and music composers. So why Amit Trivedi? And we kept on asking, we kept on asking. And in one of the conversations, something which came out really interesting, right, mm -hmm. that if you look at Amit Trivedi as a successful music composer, right, his music, his each piece connects with all the age groups. Yeah. Right. Uh, he his uh, age spectrum is really wide. Mm. And also, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, where you come from, right? Small cities, big towns, small towns, right? What, whatever, right? I mean, people relate to that music. 
people really accept that music and they love it right and so he has that you know the magic of bringing earthiness mm. plus the modern touch to his music which people accepted right sure. similarly bandhan mm. where the bank which started as bank for uh, bank for india mm. from the uh, rural areas to the smaller towns right now we are everywhere over to you apurva in the coming days how are you going to use this sonic identity where all will we get to hear it sure so wherever there is an opportunity for us to use sound mm. uh, slash music uh, for instance all communication which is video mm. or even whether it is short or an animated will have the sonic brand to end with sure at least to end with if not the throughout the video itself uh, we are implementing this as a whole tune at our call center so that people who are on hold will also get to hear this uh, we already have encouraged a lot of people in our offices and among our customers to yeah. download this as their ringtones and in fact <coughs> many of my team members we don't understand whose phone is ringing because all of us have the same <laughs> ringtone uh, we are also uploading it ac across various uh, network operators mobile network operators for it to become a caller tune so uh, at the atm when you withdraw money in, in the next couple of months it will be there mm. uh, when you're using mobile banking on internet banking and you've enabled sound uh, for transaction completion this will be the sound that will play so wherever there is possibility for us to use sound slash music uh in all across all touch points that our customers are interfacing with we will try and plug this in all right thank you so much thanks for joining us sharing your insights with us thank, thank you. you thank you with that is a wrap on story board this week you can catch all of our content on facebook twitter and youtube thanks for watching we will be back same time next week see you soon